What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 18 in the Math 1 questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question is asking us to find the distance between the y-intercept of this function and the y-intercept of the function that we just have this table of values for, x and g of x. Now, in case it wasn't clear, this is going to test you on finding your y-intercept from a function and from a table. So let's go ahead and start with a function. Anytime we see a function, our y-intercept is just going to be this number that's hanging out here by itself. So that one wasn't too bad. The y-intercept of f of x is just negative 18. Now the y-intercept of this one is going to be a bit trickier. Um, in order to do this, we're actually going to have to start by finding our slope. Now if you remember, or if you don't, the way we're going to find slope, or m, once again I have no idea how they got that letter, is we'll need, if you remember this formula, we'll need y2 minus y1. So if this is point 0.1 and this is point 0.2, this will be our x column and this will be our y column. We need to divide that by x2 minus x1. So essentially we're looking for how much y changes and dividing it by how much x changes. All right, so let's actually figure out how much each of our variables are changing. y2 is 11 minus y1, which is 2. It's going to get me 9 over something. And now x2, 10, minus x1, negative 5. 10 minus negative 5 is the same thing as 10 plus 5, which is 15. So now I know that I'm going 9 squares or units up. For every 15 I'm going right, that's the way I like to think of slope in terms of just directions on your coordinate plane. Um, so 9 up, 15 right. I'm actually going to go ahead and simplify this because 9 and 15 are both multiples of 3. Marker's dead. So divide by 3, divide by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So that means that if I'm going 9 up for every 15 that I'm going right, I can also say that I'm going 3 up for every 5 that I'm going right. So now I need to take this pattern of slope and actually put it on a graph. So here's my graph. Um, I have just quadrants 2 and 3 here that I'm primarily focused on. I have the point negative 5 and 2 graphed already, and now I'm going to use my slope in this case of three squares up for every five squares right, and I'm actually going to try to figure out my y-intercept. Now, thank goodness this is negative five, or else this would be extremely tricky, but I can go one, two, three, four, five right, and that gets me right on the y-axis, so that's good, and I just need to go one, two, three up, and that is going to put me right here, there's my line, I can keep it going in either direction, but I am finally where I need to be, and that is at the point, I keep using, nope, that's the other marker, and that one's dead. Finally, I've reached my y-intercept, which is the point zero and one, two, three, four, five. Now five, our y-value is our y-intercept in this case, so our y-intercept in this problem was negative, or y-intercept of f of x was negative 18. Our y-intercept of g of x was 5. So in order to find the difference here, I just need to subtract 5 minus negative 18, which is the same thing as 5 plus 18, because two negatives make a positive, which gives me a final answer after all that work of 23. So 23 is the difference or the distance between this y-intercept and this y-intercept of 5. Now, I'm not quite done yet because I do need to actually put this in gridded response, and I will show us how to do that very quickly. Okay, here is my grid that I had to draw myself because North Carolina didn't include the actual grid in any of these problems. But my answer was 23. I need to give each digit of that answer one box. I find my 2 and bubble it. I find my 3 and bubble that, and that is how I would actually grid my answer.